a, a, a Giants podcast for Giants fans. By Giants fans. It's Sean Morash. On the sideline, into the end zone. Touchdown, Giants! From the offseason, through the wins and the losses, it's time to take one, one, one Giant Giants step. step. Welcome into One Giant Step, a preview pod edition that full disclosure we're taping on a Tuesday night ahead of Thursday night football because that's what the NFL does to content creators and podcast makers when their team plays on short weeks. I'm Sean Morris, joined by the ever-loving and ever-smiling Bryce Gelman. We are still in a victory week mode, a shortened victory week mode, which was something I complained about on the recap pod that you didn't even have a full week to enjoy the pod. But nonetheless, we thank you all for being with us, listening on this journey throughout the giant season. And if you're a new listener, a little reminder, subscribe, download, everywhere podcasts are available, and you'll get a little alert every time we drop a pod, which is typically twice a week. Recap, previewing, very simple stuff, right? No, 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 not this week. We've already recapped the pod that dropped Monday. We're taping this on a Tuesday night with the best info we have because a game is played on Thursday night. And at some point Friday, you will find us with a reaction episode before we go back to maybe you know one pod next week previewing. We'll see what happens. All right. It's the Giants, though, and the Cowboys. It's Cowboy Week. Bryce Gelman at MetLife. We have plenty of injury stuff to get to. Plenty of discussion on this matchup with the Dallas Cowboys. And, of course, we will close our pod with the fantasy versus reality segment. So, we are 72 hours clear at the time of taping this. I can't answer for the time that you guys are listening to this. How are you feeling, Bryce, about the New York football Giants as the cloud of happiness starts to pull away and we look at the Thursday? Well, Sean, I'm going to be at the game Thursday night, so I'm excited. I'm not just excited because I'm going to be at the game. I'm excited because I think the Giants actually have a chance this game. And we're going to get to oh. it. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> Dak Prescott's won 12 Is straight that games. the Bryce Gelman I know? Straight I don't games. know Bryce Gelman. I don't Listen, know this Bryce it's, Gelman. It's, it's, le- it's, it's less about how good the Giants looked last week and how bad the, the, the Cowboys have looked over the course of the season. They look like... They're a completely changed team. They're dejected as all hell. Mike McCarthy has zero idea what he's doing. I, I, I'm excited because of the Cowboys' incompetence, not because of how good the Giants looked in the first half. They looked terrible in the second half. We talked about it. I'm excited because of how bad the Cowboys looked. Finally, how how long is it, has it been since the Cowboys looked terrible in the regular season, Sean? It's been like three, four years at this point. Yeah, yeah, it, it has. And we're going to dissect that in a couple minutes. I'm... I got to be honest with you. I'm floored, Bryce. I know you're going to the game and you should be excited. I'm pumped for you. I've had two different offers to go to the game. I'm a scared. All right. I'm a scared, as the kids like to say. I have declined both offers. I'm going to stay back uh, and stay home. But first, I'll tell you why I'm a first glance a little negative about this. I don't love the injury report heading in here on a short week. And this is the worst part about playing Thursday night football with the quick turnaround uh, I It went very underreported in the game that Adoree Jackson got hurt. In, in fact, I got to be yeah. honest with you, Bryce, because of Fox's broadcast, I'm trying to make it a, a concentrated effort this year to be on Twitter less in game. You know, so I'm just kind of focused on what's going on. The problem with that is if injury stuff pops and a broadcast doesn't bring it up, you kind of get lost on what's going on. I wasn't fully aware of Adoree Jackson being lost for an injury, and I think I mentioned this on the recap pod until after the game. We knew about the Drew Phillips injury. Why is this a big deal? Well, it's okay three weeks into an NFL season, NFL career, to admit Drew Phillips has already been a really important part of this team. He's been the best defensive back, in my opinion, that they've had against the run. And also, he's been a pretty damn good nickel uh, and something the Giants had lacked for a long time. That's a big loss in a game like this. And then to further that, Dory Jackson, who has the flexibility to play in, inside and outside, by week four, you were expecting to be revved up here. Yeah. Doesn't look like yeah. he's going to go. Again, we're taping this on Tuesday night. Be floored if either of those guys play. And if you remember, last year we started the year with a Dory Jackson, the typical outside corner, playing the slot in week one with rookie Trey Hawkins on the outside. Why? Because they trusted a Dory Jackson versus C.D. Lamb. Not that anybody's going to contain C.D. Lamb. Not that a Dory Jackson is Deion Sanders, but he was trusted there. The Giants are going to play a game with C.D. Lamb, who lines up a ton of plays in the slot without their best nickel that they've had in years in Drew Phillips and without the other guy who they trusted last year to follow him around in a Dory Jackson. This quick turnaround, who knows if those guys would have been ready by Sunday, but this is terrible for a matchup like this, and I think it's something that's really going under-discussed. Just to, before I let you piggyback on that, though we did get positive news on Nick McLeod, who missed last week. It seems like he 
should be ready to go. But again, you know, Nick McLeod was getting cooked all over the place in week one versus the Vikings. So I don't know how much or any depth is good depth to me at this point compared to what they had, you know, already green or whatever his team was. But nonetheless, I'm a, I'm a little worried about the defensive back situation in a game like this injury wise. Other than that, it feels like the Giants could be OK everywhere else. Slayton, you know, banged up thumb. Let's see what happens with him. But uh, I, I'm nervous about no Phillips, no Adore in a game like this, Bryce. Yeah, especially with the receiving core of the Dallas Cowboys. It's not like you have much after CD and Brandon Cooks. There really isn't much in that receiver room besides those two. But CD Lamb is one of the top three or four receivers in the NFL, and he's going to be matched up. Realistically, who's going to be matched up against him? You know, it, it could it could very well be Deontay Banks. And look what happened last week for yeah. Deontay Banks. He probably was probably was the worst player on the field on defense. Against against Amari again, it's Amari Cooper, one of the best route runners in the yeah. NFL. And I don't necessarily know if he's getting matched up against against CD Lamb, but if he is, <laughs> the Giants are in some trouble. And that is that is definitely the one part of this team that I think we talked about so many times being the Achilles heel of the team. And then you take out two of those guys, you take out Adore Jackson, you take out Drew Phillips, who has looked like the best player in the Giants secondary over the course of the season thus far, Sean. So it is yeah. concerning. It is. it is concerning, uh, and that's one thing that really worries me, and, and that's you know basically where we're at with the quick turnaround and the injuries. Now let's get to the matchup itself, and this is bigger than week four. Okay, Giants-Cowboys always has special meaning, truthfully, to Giant fans now more than ever because they seemingly always lose. I, I could argue, you know, the Cowboy fans in the New York area will always love it because it's their time to pump their chest out. But I'm not so sure Cowboy fans in Dallas really give a crap about the Giants anymore after being long instead of rivals when it's been this bad in this matchup for that long. How bad has it been, Shawnee? How bad has it been? Well, first of all, the Giants have lost six in a row to the Dallas Cowboys, 79, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 13 of their last 14. In fact, the last and only game in the last 14 matchups the Giants have won. Think about Giants, Cowboys, 13 of 14 you lose. Was that game on the final week of the year in the 2020 COVID season in 2021 where Dak Prescott was out for the season and Xavier McKinney is picking off, was it Andy Dalton in that game, to end the game. Uh, and the Giants then had to sit and wait and watch Doug Peterson rest all the starters at half, and that's how they missed out on the playoffs. Other than that, you have to go back to the Giants' sweep of the Dallas Cowboys when 2016, where they won in week one. Victor Cruz had a big touchdown. It might have been Cruz's last touchdown of his career. I think he was the only one who scored that year. And then, of course, Odell on the slant on Sunday night football as the defense showed up. Giants won a game 10 7. Uh, may have been 13 7. I got to double check that. Either way, 2016 was the last big year. Dude, it's been a malaise. Dak Prescott, think about this, owns. The Giants has won every matchup yep. with this team since 2017. Yep. Uh, the only game the Giants won, as I mentioned, he was out for the year. He did get hurt versus the Giants, if you remember that year. This is just insanity. It's bananas. It's everything. I know you have some stats to throw out, but I set that all up to say this. I was stunned today on a Tuesday. At a couple texts I got from people I've met throughout the years, I ended up oddly as a Giant guy Making some good relationships with people in Dallas. There's actually generally good people down there. Couple texts of cowboy really? people. Fans who grew up there that have become meteorites, petrified of this game on Thursday night. Many think it's kind of a funeral situation for the Cowboys. And I keep looking at our own stats over here going, funeral. I know the Cowboys are playing bit. My God, we've lost 13 of 14. <laughs> We beat the Cleveland Browns. We still lost to the Vikings and Commanders, which by the way, those losses look better today than they've ever looked. But <sighs> Man, I, I you know, cow. I feel like the cowboy fan is setting themselves up, going, "Oh boy, we're we're ripe for the picking," uh, and and I just wonder if snapping the malaise of losing the Cowboys has more to do with the Cowboys' struggles right now, Bryce, or you know whether the Giants can actually get some cooking of their own to make you feel positive. All right, well, Sean, I, I want to point this out because it, it truly is insane to me, and we're going to be talking about how the Giants snap this streak or whatever. Dak has won twelve straight games against the Giants. In his career, 12 straight games. Sean, how, how many of those games do you think the Giants didn't record a single sack against them? Just guess. Well, this is a good stat. I don't know the stat. So 12 straight games. I'm going to assume the Giants never seem to get home versus that offensive line. I'm going to say nine of them. Okay, seven. Either way, that's insane. Okay. Seven of the 12 games in a row that Dak Prescott has won against the Giants, the Giants didn't sack the quarterback once in seven of those games. And there were two Great games in one. 
So, and then, and then, and then 275 passing yards per game on average for Dak. And you, you, you have to account it to the game that they played at the start of, the, of last season when the Giants got shut out, when Dak didn't even need to throw a touchdown. When they, when they scored, what, four or five rushing touchdowns, the two defensive touchdowns. So there have been multiple games in that stretch where Dak has not had to do anything because the Giants have just gotten manhandled on offense by the Cowboys' defense and, of course, by the Cowboys' offensive line. So I think all of this combined and all this together, it points out one thing, Sean, that the Giants really want to win this game. If they want to end this awful streak, Mm -hmm. this awful stretch of games against Dak Prescott, they are going to need to get home to the quarterback. And the Cowboys' offensive line, Sean, looks worse this year than they have in the last, let's say, 10 years, realistically. Two two starters, two starters on that offensive line are rookies. Two, Tyler Guyton and Cooper Beebe, the center and the left tackle. Two starters are rookies. A first-round pick, the left tackle, BB third yeah. round pick. The, yeah, there's so no better chance the Giants yeah. will have to get to the quarterback than this year. And if they get after Dak Prescott, the one way we've seen the Cowboys lose games, Dak Prescott can throw interceptions. And if you get them off the game early, now they're never out of the game, as you saw last week versus Baltimore. But creating turnovers is something this giant team is going to have to do. Here's the other issue here with snapping this malaise. I think those are great stats. The Giants have been gashed on the run in the first two weeks. And last week when they got a little bit of a lead there, you saw that the, you know, Browns weren't better running anyway with their offensive line. They had to, you know, abandon it, so to speak, to throw themselves back into it. And that hurt them down multiple touchdowns. Well, on the flip side, the Cowboys went into this year seemingly with no plan at running back, no plan at running back whatsoever. Uh, So much so that we'll see if Dalvin cook gets activated off the practice squad for this game. The Cowboys at this moment don't seem to pose a major running threat, which would play into the Giants' hands uh, as far as their weakness goes. But, you know, I've seen the Giants get exposed before. So, you know, whether Dalvin Cook comes out and looks like the Dalvin Cook of old, we'll see. But on the other side, the Cowboys' defense, look, Micah Parsons has wrecked plenty of games. Opening night was last year a disaster for the Giants. The Cowboys are getting gashed on the run themselves. I mean, look what Alvin Kamara did to them a couple weeks ago. And then, obviously, the Ravens basically threw the ball, I think, a total of 13 times in this past game. They just took Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, Justice Hill, and said, forget about it. We're going to run it down your throats on a short week where maybe the – think about this. The Dallas defense got to be tired after staying on the field getting mowed down like that. I'd keep attacking that this week. I know we love Malik Neighbors. I'm not saying not to get him involved, and I'm not saying he won't have big plays. I would go right back after with Devin Singletary. And, oh, by the way, short week, I'd hit him with more Tyrone Tracy this yep. week as well. Yeah. Uh, Singletary's fumbled a couple times, but keep the legs fresh. Get Tracy rolling on the ground. There is an avenue to run it down. The Cowboys got to be tired on a short week, that defense. Is, there is an avenue to ram it down their throats here, Bryce. And that is the way to exploit this Dallas defense. But you look at their secondary, too. Diggs, Bland, two interception merchants. Two guys who... I mean, all in all, are going to have a very difficult time matching up against well, elite neighbors. Bryce, so I'll give you good news. news on offense. Bryce, with, with good the- news. Deron Bland is out and out for six to eight Dallas weeks. Hasn't played yeah. this year, so he he has been a mess. I, Trayvon Diggs, either way, either way, yeah, and either I way, at they the don't have the injury t- report. They got two cornerbacks on that on the injury report. Yeah, no, they're they're banged up in the secondary so, as well. But Bryce, you don't want to end up in a situation like this where the Giants are down in this game 10 points, something like that, and now it's drop-back time and have Micah Parsons tee off. That's why I think running the ball is so important here and getting after Dak early in this game and not let him complete big plays to CeeDee Lamb versus an exposed secondary and instead get those sacks. Because if the Giants stay out of a situation where they're not down 7, 8, 9, 10 points, they should, in, in theory, always be in this game. Because the moment they go down 10, they could easily be down 20, 21. We've seen it with Dallas where they're just teeing off. Which also... No, as long as we're bringing up the malaise, how about this? Before we throw bouquets at this offensive line, and we have, and it's been deservedly so, the Cowboys have ruined the Giants' offensive line, have ruined any ever positive thoughts about the Giants' offensive line in recent years. If this offensive line holds up in this game, I I think it will tell a bigger tale for the season, and honestly, the next two, three seasons, in terms of how this offensive line now can get back to being what we want the Giants' offensive line to be and what it hasn't been for a decade. I think it's that important a night for this O-line on Thursday. 
for, because for whatever reason, the bad, the worst of the worst every year for the Giants has come against the Cowboys and the Eagles. Yep. So if they perform well against a team they've struggled mightily against in, in recent years, you know, I haven't won a game against them since 2021. So it, it's been a long time since you beat the Dallas Cowboys. You got them early on in the season. Last time you got a chance to crack at them early on in the season, you got bashed. You got yeah. destroyed. You got obliterated on your home turf on opening night. And the Giants never recovered from that. So now on the flip side, you have a chance to completely change the trajectory of this season by beating the Cowboys at home against a team, Sean. We've discussed it this entire podcast. Dallas is not who they have been in recent years in the regular season. They're frauds, Sean. They are. And I think to I'm hammer that right. home, to, to hammer that home, you've got all these Dallas Cowboys beat writers, whoever, whoever you talk to down there in Dallas, texting you about this, saying that this is a problem. The fact that they're saying that, this Dallas Cowboys team with the fans always, always overhyping their team, the fact that they're not right now tells you a much bigger story about that organization and their problems. For once, for once, Sean, I would like to see the Giants match up against the Cowboys and the Giants be the team that is less incompetent. It has been a very long time, Sean, a very long time. And I think it could start with, with, uh, with Thursday night. I really think it can. Yeah, and before we get to our fantasy reality and game pick segment, I think a couple things need to be brought up too along those lines. The Giants have not shaken what happened last year. The First of all, the second game yeah. in Dallas – where Tommy DeVito has to play, it's a mess. They give up basically 74 points in the game. That game was a real friction-type game for Wink Martindale and Brian Dable, if you recall, and that relationship completely soured from that point forward. Uh, that, I know, sticks with Brian Dable. I brought this up when we had John Mara on our show on Evan and Tiki on WFAN. One of the answers he gave us on the Friday before the opener about setting a tone for a season opener. And that's why he thought the Minnesota game was so important was how much he can't let go of what happened on opening night last year when he was 40. Nothing, how much it set the tone for the year this week already. I've seen quotes from Andrew Thomas, cave on Thibodeau, the guys that were here last year, you could really tell Bryce. And I, I thought this was interesting. You know, everybody says, ah, oh, you know, you forget it next game, next mentality. That opening night loss out of all the 13 of the last 14 really, really is still sat with and bothered a lot of the Giants, probably because they put a whole summer's worth of work and to see it all evaporate like that and see what it did for the whole season. There's a lot of guys, John Runyon, Jermaine Illuminor, Malik Neighbors, Brian Burns, the list goes on, Tyler Newbin, who were not a part of any of these losses and not a part of that last year. But for the guys that were, man, it's sitting with them and it sits with the organization. And I kind of get the vibe that they've always, despite whether they would have won or lost Sunday, always had this Thursday night at home circled as sort of a redemption story for them. Whether that, you know, is yeah. enough to help further motivate or not, it is just worth noting that I, I, I could tell, and you guys could probably sense just listening, this game does mean a little bit more to a lot of the guys who felt truly embarrassed last year. Absolutely. And it should. It, it should burn deep inside of them. And it, I can guarantee you this, Sean, it burns deep inside the, 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 the stomachs of a lot of Giants fans out there, particularly ones at the game, particularly that one guy they showed in the middle of the game with the with, with the with the blue face. You remember that guy? Yeah. The, yes. The meme? And he was so like, upset. Like, right. Talk, yeah. He. He. He represented the, the rest of us didn't. Either way, there are a lot of fans out there who have not forgotten that game. I have not, personally. I sat down so excited. That first drive, Sean, they're moving the ball. Then the Andrew Thomas fall start. You know, then the block kick, return for a touchdown. That was it. That was it. This piece of garbage. With all due respect, Bryce, I need to do a live cutaway right now before we get to a fantasy versus reality. I don't, I'm sorry for all you Met fans out here. You're losing 4 nothing in front of me at the time of this taping. This piece of garbage, Alex Verdugo, has again grounded into a double play. Okay? It is first and second with no out. The Yankees are down 2-1. I don't know what time you're listening to this, when you're listening to this, and this game is long over by the time most of you are listening to this. Yeah. But the insistence on playing Alex Verdugo over Jason Dominguez is right there. When everybody goes, oh, he's been hot lately. He's been hot. His out are monumental outs. He just cost him two outs and a rally here in the fifth inning. Enough with playing Alex Verdugo. The Giants stress this out enough. Can you just play your best lineup with Jason Dominguez as you're trying to clinch a game, Bryce? It drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. 
And now I think that's Michael Harris. He's making catches on Acuna Jr. I mean, the baseball world's collapsing. The football world needs the Giants. They need to slay these slay these dragons, slay these ghosts. I can't believe it. Enough of playing Alex for two, though. All right, let's get to our fantasy versus reality segment. By the way, you could cut that if you want. I just need the record. I'm not, this is all I'm, not, right now. I'm not going to. Um, no, you're you're going to watch that. Yeah. Okay. He sucks. I, I mean, he just you sucks. Know, terrible. Tell me about it. Tell me about it, Sean. And to make matters worse, yeah, here's Juan Soto in the on-deck circle. So if Glaber gets uh-huh. out, then we're just going to ruin a, a rally. And everybody listening to this might be listening to a, to a situation from three days ago. So I just realized how bad of podcasting this is. But that's just naturally me watching a Yankee game as a podcast. Okay. Fantasy versus reality game picks. Giants, Cowboys, Thursday night. Let's start fantasy-wise. I kind of alluded to it a little while ago. I'm going to be sneakily on Tyrone Tracy plays in this game. Okay. Uh, he by the time Thursday morning rolls around, he'll be priced fair as an anytime touchdown score. He will probably have a low, you know, 36 and a half, if not less, rushing prop total. And I think on fantasy teams alike, I bring this up because I've noticed a trend here on Thursday night football. This happened last week with Ramondre Stevenson with the Patriots. Teams on short weeks tend to use multiple backs more, even if they have their bell cow a yeah. little more than you would think. And it's burned Smart. people fantasy and alike going with the starting running backs a little bit because they're like, wait, why are they getting this guy involved more? And for the giants this week, that's going to be Tyrone Tracy, who, if you noticed felt a little more noticeable for a couple moments on the field Sunday. And I think that's a precursor to Thursday. So just be on sneaky watch out. I think you might have some money to be made. If you play daily fantasy uh, or just player prop stuff. I think Tyrone Tracy could have a couple moments in this game, Bryce. And I think his speed, especially with the Cowboys not being able to yeah. stop the run, could keep the Cowboys off first. Would it shock anybody if Tyrone Tracy ripped off like a 50-yard run in this game? Because that's what the Cowboys have done. Wouldn't shock me. So just keep an eye on that, all right? I would love to be right and pat myself on the back about it later. The reality of the game also ties into the running back situation. Man, we've had two straight games with a Devin Singletary fumble. We've also had Daniel Jones, luckily because of the, obviously, the roughing the passer, play pretty mistake-free football. Got bailed out, but played mistake-free football. I said it last week, and it was cookie-cutter, but it is the truth. Dak Prescott has become a turnover machine at times when you could get to him. If the Giants, and you look at the way the Browns, I'm sorry, let me go back to this. When the Browns lost to the Cowboys in week one, and the Cowboys put up 31 points, if you didn't watch that game, you walked away saying, wow, the Cowboys really figured out that good Browns defense. They really didn't. Deshaun Watson handed them a million turnovers in the red zone. And, oh, my God, is that out? Is that gone? No, it's a fly out by Glaber Torres. This team stinks sometimes. Um, anywho, Bryce, I'm totally derailing this. This is what happens <laughs> well, when you tape during a Yankee. Off. It's a Yankee Oriole game that's monstrous here. So back to the reality. Uh, Dak Prescott, all them, they got all the turnovers, and that's how they scored their points. So the Giants can't be doing what the Cleveland Browns did in week one, which is Daniel Jones, Devin Singletary, handing the, the, the Cowboys plus territory drives, which makes their offense so much more easy to function, especially with the Giants' injuries in the secondary. So I would love a couple turnovers from Dak Prescott, but above anything else, man, Singletary, figure this crap out. You can't have two fumbles yeah. in this game. And Daniel Jones, you know, you lucked out last week. Don't throw a bad pick in this game. And don't throw a pick like you did versus Seattle in prime time last year at home where you're driving down and it completely alters the game and it's a pick six. As you could tell, I still have negative fears and negative scars. Now, the the pick, the game pick. You got to show it to me, man. I have waved the pom-poms for this team. I believe they would win last week. And then I, after we taped the pot, I went back, oh, are they going to win? I don't like the fact that people from Dallas are texting me. I don't yeah. like the fact that the world who kisses the Cowboys' ass suddenly this week goes, oh, look how vulnerable they are with the Giants. The Giants, still only beat, the Giants still only beat the Cleveland Browns. We are a week ago taping the preview pod for the Brown game going, man, is Dable and Shane going to get fired? You mean to tell me off one game versus a lousy Deshaun Watson, I'm going to totally flip the script here? The Giants have been owned by Dallas for far too long. And I don't like, I really don't like the Drew Phillips Adore injury in this game. It scares me. And I think that a week after CeeDee Lamb fumbles and is crying on the sideline, I could kind of see in this be a band aid game for CeeDee Lamb before he eventually implodes again towards the end of the year and he gets right versus the Giants. I say all that to say, I think the Cowboys are winning this game 31 17. I- I'm down on the game. 
I don't see what everybody else sees. I, I got to be proved. I want to be proven wrong. Are you kidding me? I'll have the pom-poms out in this post-game pod like you wouldn't believe. But it, it's just hard for me to get there yet. Now, they beat Dallas. It's going to be very hard for me not to pick them to beat Seattle. And I'm already circling that Cincinnati yeah. game. And I would even preface this by saying, I don't even think the season's necessarily over, no, in this whole NFC situation right now if they lost this game. Because I do think Seattle and Cincinnati look right for the picking before you figure out a game with the Eagles, who also look vulnerable. Uh, but show me. Giants, show me, and we could have a season. I'm ready to be shown. I'm not buying it. 31-17 Cowboys. Bryce, take it away. So, Sean, I, I know I've gone neighbors the first three weeks, and f- for good reason. And last last week, what, seven catches, 78 yards, and two touchdowns? You're welcome. You're welcome. I know you would. You wouldn't have decided. Like, like if you have Malik Neighbors on your fantasy, you're gonna play him either way. I know my yeah. opinion on whether or not he's gonna have a good week. But fa- when we say fantasy versus reality, it takes into yeah. account player props because that's what yeah. we all play in New York anyway. Yeah, I mean, and I definitely, I definitely like what you have to say about Tyrone Tracy. I'm gonna be the game Thursday, as as I mentioned. So I might have to take the over on Tyrone Tracy rushing yards, and we'll see if he if if he doesn't hit. I might have to demo request you, but I, I'm gonna trust you on that. Uh, I I think that that if you really want a guy who's you know under the radar who's necessarily has been really solid this year for as like a flex play, it's Wondell Robinson. I think he's, yeah. he's like nine point five, thirteen point one, and ten point five, which is really good in a in, in an extremely deep league. If you're running 12, 14 guys in a fantasy league, yeah. that it's could be a valuable target. guy as your flex. So and, yeah. and I think with with the attention that Malik Neighbors is going to garner from opposing cornerbacks and safeties, and everyone on the field, you want to go with the next best option. I think Wandale has established a rapport with Daniel Jones. If you want a guy under the radar, start Wandale Robinson. He's been solid this year. Again, a Daniel Jones wide receiver should not have 10-plus points in fantasy each week, unless your name is Malik Neighbors. Wandale Robinson has been that guy thus far. Play Wandale Robinson, and don't worry about it. I think for, for the reality of this game, Sean, and we talked about it before in terms of getting to the quarterback. How did the Giants have so much success in, in, in their last game against the Browns? They got to the quarterback. They, got they the quarterback. sacked Deshaun Watson. They sacked Deshaun Watson. How are they going to win this game? You know the last Sacking time they Dak sacked Dak You know the last time they sacked Dak, Dak Prescott? Well, you said seven games that hasn't happened. I'm going to go 2000, probably the game he got uh, hurt, 20, 2020. December of 2021 was the last time oh, wow. the Giants sacked that Dak Prescott. And a little aside from that, Sean, do you know who's the defensive coordinator of the last four games the Giants have played against the Cowboys? Wink Bardell. the Giants? Oh, yeah. Wink Bardell right? has, of course. And do you know what he does a lot? Blitz. He blitzes. And they didn't get to the quarterback once. Wow. And all four of the games that they played with, with Wink Bardell, uh, that's a little aside. That's fun. Uh, the Giants are going to win this game if they get to the quarterback. If they take advantage of the two rookie linemen that the the Cowboys are starting, and the one in the middle, Cooper BB, is the one I'm most concerned about. If, if I'm the Cowboys, because you know who matches up right in the middle, Dexter the best Lawrence. defensive tackle in football, the best defensive, the best defensive player in football, Sean. I know you don't agree with that, but I do. I think that. I I think the Giants lose this game in heartbreaking fashion. I I just don't see. Wow, okay, you're going loss after all that. Okay. I don't see how we can have fun on this podcast. I just don't foresee it being a possibility, Sean. I think the Giants lose 23-20 on some BS Brandon Aubrey 68-yard field goal. I know I'm being a little unrealistic, but it's going to be like some 60-yard field goal, a repeat of the Jake Elliott game a few years ago. I just don't see, after all of this, after all of the Cowboys fans in your mentions, in your in your text messages, they are trying to downplay what the eventual performance is going to be from the Cowboys. I think they're doing it for a reason, and I think they're going to get their way. I think the Cowboys are somehow going to find a way to win this game. That's what Dak Prescott does. He wins against the Giants. If you've won 12 games in a row against a specific team, if you're a quarterback, what should give me pause in predicting a loss for that quarterback? Like what 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 should give me a reason to go that way if we haven't seen it, Sean? So until right. I see it, I'm not gonna predict that it goes any other way for good reason. I think the Giants keep it close. I think they do get to the quarterback three or four times, but at the end, it's ultimately not enough. The Giants falter at the end. Daniel Jones has a chance to put the game away 
with a game-winning touchdown, and they don't end up getting it. Dak goes the length of the field, and Brandon Arbery kicks a BS field goal, and we all go home disappointed. I don't want that to be the case, Sean. I really oh, don't. Man. I want this win so bad. I want this win more, more than I've wanted any win since 2022 in the playoffs against those godforsaken Eagles, the terrible, awful fans of the – I cannot stand them. The Giants, I really want them to win this game. I just – I. I don't see it. Man, I don't. I, I, I had totally – not that I forgot about Brandon Aubrey, but that scenario didn't pass through my brain, and now it did, and now I can't let go of it, and now I'm going to have anxiety until this game kicks go. off. You're welcome. So hopefully you've listened to this a little closer to kickoff, so your anxiety is not as going to be as long as mine. He's Bryce Gelman, at Bryce Gelman on Twitter next. I'm Sean Morash, at Sean Morash Twitter next. We're free on the Odyssey app, and everywhere podcasts are available. The name of the podcast, as you know, is One Giant Step. Will the Giants come out victorious or will in one way, shape or form, Bryce and I both be right in the end. It's another Dallas victory. We'll be back to recap it all on this same one giant step feed everywhere you get your podcast. Thanks everyone for taking one giant step with us. 